This is St. Louis Public Radio. It's April 26th. This is The Gateway. I'm Wayne Pratt. St. Louis Veterans Affairs healthcare officials have given the COVID-19 vaccine to more than half of the veterans who depend on the system. Many say the process has been efficient. I called the VA hospital and they say, uh, when would you like to come? I say, uh, when do you have an appointment? And it was like, you can come in the next two days. Boom. I was here. I got the shot. In just a few minutes, St. Louis Public Radio's Chad Davis reports on how the VA's vaccine process could be a blueprint for public health. Illinois and Missouri residents once again have three COVID-19 vaccine options. Both states over the weekend cleared local health departments and providers to resume use of the Johnson & Johnson vaccine. Hannah Meisel has more. The Johnson & Johnson vaccine was put on pause earlier this month while federal authorities investigated whether there was a link between six rare cases of blood clots out of nearly 7 million doses given in the U.S. On Friday evening, the Food and Drug Administration and Centers for Disease Control gave the okay to use the one-dose vaccine again, but the FDA will add a warning to its label noting the potential risk of rare but serious blood clots. The clots occurred in women ages 18 to 49. And since the vaccine was put on pause, nine more post-shot clotting cases have been confirmed. Still, health officials said the cases were extremely rare and stressed that benefits of the vaccine outweigh potential risks. Johnson & Johnson vaccines only represent about 3% of the nearly 9 million doses given in Illinois since mid-December. I'm Hannah Meisel. More homeless youth are seeking help in St. Louis during the pandemic and putting pressure on one of the few shelters set up to serve them. Covenant House Missouri provides shelter and transitional housing for people ages 16 to 24. The number of people waiting for a bed more than doubled in the past year to about 160. Colleen Dom with Covenant House says many young adults lost their jobs during the pandemic and it's been more challenging to get back into the workforce. There's this bit of a competition between individuals who have long employment history who lost their jobs and then our young people who maybe don't have the extensive job experience or long resume, are now really kind of competing for some of those entry-level jobs that are becoming available again. The shelter is full. It can only provide a bed for about one in five homeless teens who reach out. Several area officials have received an up-close look at conditions in St. Louis's two jails. Mayor Tishara Jones and Congresswoman Cori Bush toured the facilities over the weekend. Jones is pledging to close the medium security institution known as the workhouse because of unsanitary and unsafe conditions. Bush says they've heard stories about human waste on the floor and saw inadequate health care facilities within the jails during those tours on Saturday. Washington University will start teaching incarcerated people this fall at the Women's Eastern Correctional Center in Vandalia. It's the first in-person college program at the women's prison. St. Louis Public Radio's Kayla Drake has more. The prison in Vandalia is an hour and a half northwest of Washington University's campus. That's a pretty long drive for professors to travel, but a new grant will allow them to teach women in the prison virtually. The $900,000 award comes from the Mellon Foundation. It's a win for gender studies professor Barbara Baumgardner, who helped secure the funding. I do think the liberal arts really changes people's perspectives of the world. Um, and um, I'm, I'm deeply committed to offering that kind of opportunity to help people. Wash U started its prison education project in 2014. The school has offered degree programs at the men's prison in Pacific since. I'm Kayla Drake, St. Louis Public Radio. The public radio family in Missouri is mourning the loss of KCUR reporter Aviva Okuson Haberman. Kansas City police say she was killed Friday by a stray bullet that went through a window of her first floor apartment. Many of Okuson Haberman's reports aired on St. Louis Public Radio and were posted at stlpr.org. The University of Missouri graduate had worked at the public radio station in Kansas City since 2019. Aviva Okuson Haberman was 24. About half the veterans who rely on the Veterans Affairs health care system in the St. Louis region have received the COVID-19 vaccine. 
Officials are hoping to vaccinate up to 80 percent of enrolled veterans by summer. As St. Louis Public Radio's Chad Davis reports, many say the VA's vaccination efforts could serve as a model for other systems. When Army veteran Kenny Holloway decided to get the COVID-19 vaccine a couple months ago, he pre-registered with hospital systems and clinics across the St. Louis region. The 57-year-old Desert Storm veteran from South St. Louis didn't hear back immediately. But when he called the St. Louis Veterans Affairs Healthcare System where he's enrolled, he soon got a response. I called the VA hospital and they say, uh, when would you like to come? I say, uh, when do you have an appointment? And it was like, you can come in the next two days. Boom. I was here. I got the shot. Since the arrival of the first COVID-19 vaccine doses back in late December, the Veterans Health Administration, the nation's largest health care system, has vaccinated more than 2 million veterans enrolled in its system. They've also vaccinated VA staff. In the St. Louis system, about half of the more than 40,000 veterans enrolled have received two doses of the Pfizer or Moderna vaccines. That's better than what the region is doing as a whole. For example, about 24 percent of people in St. Louis County and 18 percent of residents in the city of St. Louis have been fully vaccinated. Holloway wasn't surprised that the VA has made so much progress distributing the vaccine. He says veterans like him know they can count on the VA. The VA system is, is, is come a long way. I have a a doctor at the VA and also you can also go outside as well for different services, you know, and if you don't call them, they call you. Mr. Holloway, how you doing? You know it's time for you to uh, come in for your annual exam. VA officials say the system's doctors have long established trust with their patients, and that helps when they need to advise them to get the COVID-19 vaccine. Once we knew we were getting vaccine, we really did a lot of communication from our staff to our veterans. That's Patty Hendrickson, the Associate Director of Patient Care Services for the St. Louis VA. She says its doctors often reach out to their patients about appointments and checkups. Now they're reminding veterans to book vaccine appointments. We did a lot more touches with our veterans because um, we just didn't want them to be out there on the, their own, you know. So I think we built stronger relationships with them. Hendrickson says once a veteran has a positive experience getting vaccinated at the VA, they're more likely to share their experience with other veterans. The St. Louis VA has been able to vaccinate up to 800 veterans a day in recent weeks at clinics across the region. Veterans can sign up through email and by calling the VA hotline. Many veterans have received care from the VA system for decades. A 2019 study published in the Annals of Internal Medicine found that VA hospitals tend to outperform non-VA hospitals in patient care. Suzanne Gordon is a senior policy analyst for the Veterans Healthcare Policy Institute in California. She says the VA systems and doctor-patient relationships could set a blueprint for public health systems in the future. It's a lesson America needs to learn, you know, um, You need a national system, not just a national payer like Medicare. You need systems of care and protocols and processes, and you need to know who your patients are, and you need to be able to contact them. Veterans in the St. Louis area agree. 73-year-old Vietnam Army veteran Daniel Hextetter lives in South St. Louis County. He got his vaccine from the Jefferson Barracks Hospital, where he has a primary care doctor. Hextetter says as an Army veteran, he knows he can trust the care he receives at the VA. In Vietnam, they would always tell us, you know, if you get you get shot or injured, your, your medical care would be better in Vietnam because we can put you on a helicopter and get you back to a bigger hospital or to a hospital ship faster than they could get you off a highway if you had a highway accident in the United States. And that's what we were always told. And I kind of believe that. The VA also is vaccinating spouses of veterans and veterans who aren't enrolled in the system. I'm Chad Davis, St. Louis Public Radio. Our David Casares edited that report. Shula Newman is the executive editor of St. Louis Public Radio. Music by Ryan McNeely of Adult Fur. I'm Wayne Pratt. The Gateway is a production of St. Louis Public Radio. Understanding starts here. St. Louis Public Radio is a service of the University of Missouri-St. Louis. Support comes from the Missouri Forest Products Association, committed to conservation and careful management of the state's forests to make them more resilient and better habitats for wildlife. Choosewood.com.